Hello guys, welcome to the United Way. Happy Sunday. It depends on where you're living. It could be Sunday evening, Monday afternoon. But anyway, happy uh, Sunday and welcome to the United Way. Rob Dukanye. Yeah, as you see on the thumbnail, it is uh, written there that double sweep for Manchester United. United, we are going a different direction with Eric Ten Hag. We do have a very short... Uh, uh, program today for you guys and uh we are, there are two news actually a good and bad one but let's start straight away with the bad news and close it close the sunday with the good news the bad news is that united isn't sold yet because of the complications which uh is aligned with the sales of manchester united why because um there have been some clues and i've been talking about this in my previous videos that manchester united the glazers it seems as if the glazers are not willing to sell i think the glazers will be pushed to sell the team but they are not the club but they are not willing to sell why because as i said again many times if you're a viewer of the channel that man united man united is a catch cow it's a it's, a, it's one of the very few it's a one of the very few and unique clubs in the world that generates uh constant revenue but um and i think uh you know the, the glazers were going to sell so you shouldn't be worried about that and i will tell you guys why one of the reasons why i think is because no matter how you invest in whatever product the tangible product which is manchester united because you have players to pay um you have staffs to pay but most importantly the most important thing to do in manchester united you have to invest on the playing ground you have to invest on Old Trafford and also the playing ground. And the Glazers, these Americans, are not ready to invest. And uh, considering that the investment would take over a billion, some are talking about two billions. If you listen to what the, the Qatari investment had uh, done, their analysis and uh, uh, their due diligence uh, and come out with such figures, which are scary, actually. So I think the Glazers, uh, no matter what happens, uh, the Glazers are going to sell. We have been getting a lot of rumors also from other sources. Uh, we've gone down from the mail, uh, the mail also, that uh, it's a bit conflicting within the Glazers family. Don't forget, guys, for some of you talking about the Glazers, Joe Glazers and his brother, uh, the one, um, because they are the figurehead of the club. These kids, I call them kids because they did not buy Manchester United. This club was bought by their billionaire father who died uh, some years ago. And uh, maybe the same vision the father had wasn't the vision the kids have. And... No matter how you say it, the Glazers owns just 69% of Manchester United, if I'm not mistaken, 69%. 69% and the valuation of 69% considering the bids that we noted today, uh, of today, is like 5 million, right? 5 million pounds. So 5 billion pounds, sorry. 5 billion pounds. And the thing is that no matter what happens... Manchester United needs investment. It has arrived at a certain peak where money has to come into the club and it's massive investment or we will not be able to compete. So that is why the Glazers will want to sell. sell. And if you, uh, if you tell me, Rob, then how would the Glazers, how can the Glazers manipulate and get money and don't sell, don't lose their control uh, package in Manchester United? Uh, I think for them to to get some investment, they will have to sell the shares. Let me say they will have like 51% and do away with uh, the rest, which would be basically, I think, uh, I mean, 18, yeah, 18%. Let me say 18%, yes, but 18% in today's market, if somebody gives the Glazers a billion dollar for 18% for Manchester United, it's still not enough to to um, to face the challenges what the club that what the club needs and not talking only about that, the fans will riot against the Glazers if Glazers try to stay in the team. I know we have got statements here from uh, Kavi on Sky Sports saying that the Glazers um, don't care about the reaction of the fans that have been doing that, doing with that for, the, uh, for a decade now. The uh, Glazers out, you guys know, we keep uh, posting it here on, on, the, on YouTube, uh, on social medias basically. But I want to tell you guys something, guys. Uh, the Glazers have no choice. They have to leave Manchester United. I'm in a point where I don't care who buys the club now because we, we need we cannot be competi competitive in the market if we don't have an ambition owner, right? If you see what I mean. So that's the bad news. And let's hit straight to the good news. The good news is that Ten Hag coming to Manchester. I've told all of you watching us here uh, in this channel on the United Way. By the way, guys, please make sure you click the like on the video and subscribe because we'll be having some cracking time as time goes on. We'll get some good good news here coming out from Sports Magazine. Yeah, the Manchester United are interested um, in uh, acquiring a young talent, a Dutch international called Ramos uh, Hochlong. He's a, he is a Danish international, sorry. 
my Danish isn't good. I can't pronounce well Danish words uh, properly. But uh, for those of you who are football lovers, you must know this guy. He he was uh, he just uh, moved from Copenhagen to uh, to Atlanta in the Calcio Italian League. Good attacker. Now he has scored I think three goals uh, for the Danish national team. He's a centre forward. We have been told he's a fan of Manchester United, and that's a plus when you have players bringing players in your club who are. For, uh, who, whose dream are to play for this club, not only um, uh, physically or not only to get uh, uh, fame, but also to contribute who, uh, and also uh, want to bring some um, some memories into 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 Manchester United. So uh, I think he uh, such players like uh, 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 Ramos Hochlund. Uh, Hochlund. Honestly, I haven't seen much about him, but when I look at transfer mark, I know it's written there that his value is in pounds 30, uh, roughly 30 million pounds transfer. He just signed a contract. It's a year or year from just a year now. I mean, the end of the season, he will be it will be his first year in the Calcio Italian League, which he has caught some couple of goals. He's a very aggressive attacker. His movements are quite very intelligent. What does he bring? He brings a uh, he 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 brings that tenacity, that youth, that cream, uh, that Ten Hag wants. If you ask my opinion about if this is the kind of attacker we should go, because most of you want Osimhen, the Nigerian inter international, David Osimhen. Some of you even want Harry Kane, and uh, Harry Kane, which is at the end of his career, thirty years already, but uh, a Premier League. Um, uh, con a confirmed player playing the Premier League player which uh, has proven himself I think the highest highest goal scorer now in, uh, in one of the highest goal scorer in the Premier League for sure yeah uh, but um, uh, so who do I think um, United should go I think if Eric Ten Hag wants such a player which I know he can develop he can he can nurture the player can play the way United wants to play and Eric Ten Hag sees a vision in these players I think the club should listen to Terry Tenag. Terry Tenag has signed five players this season. None of them has been beyond below average. All of them have produced positively. They have, have, they, have they have created a positive effect in the Manchester United team. So I think he has earned that respect as a manager to be heard from as a club. I mean, I mean, I, I guess most of you will agree with me on this one. So I think uh, we should get um, uh, we should get the players that he wants. It's it is not yet uh, written in stone, but I, I think uh, United have their reports here. United are really staging and watching the player. Uh, the player. Some of you can go online, yeah, and, uh, and 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 learn about the player. It's Ras Rasmus Rasmus Hodgelong Hodgelod. Rasmus Hodgelong. I don't know how you pronounce that in Dutch, but that's him. Now, uh, nineteen years of age. Very high quality, um, one meter ninety one, which is he's not his tall center forward. Very physical, Danish international already at nineteen, which says a lot, a lot about um the the quality of player which he is. Uh, I'm just trying to get some statistics here. So um, uh, talking about players which he's compared with a transfer uh, transfer market, his value uh, uh, joins. Uh, let me say um. You have players like uh, uh, Victor Osemen, who is 100 million, the Nigerian international transfer, which I think it will be a, a stretch. I think he's a very good player. I know most of you here, the Nigerians in the channel, you will be happy. I will be happy to see this to Victor. But with such an amount, I think if we can bring a player that we can, that uh, if we, I mean, let me just put this very shortly. I would prefer 100 million to get two semi quality attackers who have some progress in them rather than buying it for one player because that is what you talk about having a, t a, a, a team death and this is what manchester we didn't have this season and hopefully we can have that uh, uh next season since i like to get the my content really short let's go directly to another player they call evans ferguson evans ferguson uh he plays for uh the premier league team brighton O'Brien. you know he's an irish player player from ireland he's an ireland uh player already if, um I, i've watched a lot of games of this of this kid 20 years uh 18 years of age sorry 18 years of age has scored three go three five goals in the premier league or uh, made five appearance scored three goals if i'm not mistaken uh, in general, has made, has has played ten games, but in Premier League has done I think five games. Uh, a very aggressive attacker has a yellow card already. He just signed his, his professional contract from uh, from uh, Brighton. I know most of you, uh, Brighton International, no Brighton, uh, which we will be playing the semi finals of the cup just in less than a week from now. I want to tell you guys something. 
Ferguson is just the proper kind of player I would recommend for Manchester United if I were if I were relevant in terms of transfer. And I want to explain to you why. Because Ferguson, he's a Premier League proven player. Very aggressive what's him played. If you haven't heard about him, keep this name. Evan Ferguson. We are playing against them in Premier League uh, in the Cup, the, the English Cup semi-finals with Brighton. His movement is elite. If we do have such a player, his build-up play is so good for his age. He reminds me of uh, Wayne Rooney. When Rooney was uh, uh, Manchester United bought Rooney at, I think, 17, 18 years of age to, to Old Trafford and became a legend. I think United needs to go back in that culture of uh, getting young players. Tell me what you guys think, guys, because I would love to hear from you also. I think we have to go to this culture of bringing in young players. There were a time like four or five years ago when you, you know the Glazers were all just draining us money. We're buying all these finished products here in Cavani, Sanchez. We need to bring young players that will help to bring energy in our team that wants that wants to prove. And this is what Ragnik said last year, that we need to go for those who are going for their second contract. Second contracts and those who want to prove themselves in the international uh, league. And I think I still think Ralph Ragnik would have been a very good director um, uh, for Manchester United. Talking about director of Manchester United, Manchester United are trying to bring in a... Uh, um, a top director of, of the club. We we'll talk about uh, Michel, Michel, uh, Andy Michel. Uh, is it Mi Michel? Yes. Uh, the 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 uh, they call him the guru of transfer. His networking is is it's really top. High links with the French team, with the French uh, league, European connection, top one also as well. And uh, if we can get, uh, I think it's Paul Michel. They call him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, why? If we can bring it up uh, to Manchester United, then that is already a start that we are getting back up to where we want to be. Tell me what you guys think, because at the moment, if you think United, the sales of United, is a game changer. I would tell you that it is more than a game changer for the Premier League and European football because if we can manage to get these Americans out of our team and get someone like Sheikh Jassim or Sir Jim Ratcliffe, I think we will just turn the page and, and we'll be moving. I'm not saying we're going to win everything, but I'm saying we're going to change the page the way we present ourselves in the in the world in the world game. We'll be we'll get we'll regain our respect because we'll be we'll start. Um, presenting ourselves as a football club. I, I think some of you have forgotten that Manchester United were, have been accused by most of the guys who work for the team. Van Gaal came here and said, we are like, we are, we are just like a bank. We are not, we are not like a football club. It's just like, I mean, Mo Jose Moreno gave the same complaint, you know. Ragni came, there was a lot of bureaucracy behind Manchester United, which, uh, I mean, it was all about marketing. It wasn't. It had less to do about getting results on the pitch because the brand of United was so attri attractive, appealing to appealing to, uh, to to foreign brands that uh, the, the the Americans, the Glazers, didn't care. They were just there for their dividends. I think all this story, most of you know about it, but um, uh, I'm just you know just trying to bring the bell to you guys to get an idea of how things can change if we get a new owner. As you know, the, the coming back with the owner, you most of you must have known that. Uh, we are now in a limbo. Nobody in world football knows the next step for Manchester United. We heard that uh, yesterday, Sir Jim Ratcliffe did an offer. Also, Sheikh Jassim did an offer. These are just very conflicting messages coming out for both sides. The, that Jassim has given an offer and even she tempted the, base, the Glazers to bring their, their, their American club, uh, the Tampa Bay's, to play uh, in Doha for certain games. You know, have given the Glazers kind of attractive um, um, uh, offers in orders to to win the signature of Manchester United. And we're talking again, I'm reminding you guys, we're talking about 69%. 69%. When you talk about full sales, 69%. Because the other percentage is owned by all the, all the small uh, owners hold, uh, hold, hold the other stakes of Manchester United. But you know, when you have a club where you control more than 50% of the club, that's what matters because the sole decision makers come through you and that's what massive business owners are more interested in. That is what I'm trying to say. So guys, tell me what you think about um, this play or two young players. Tell me your opinion because you know about the trade sales of Manchester United, we are limited. We have no clue what will be in future, who is going to be where. But tell me what you think about Ras Maramus. Is it Ram Ramus Halund? It's so difficult. I don't know how. And Evan Ferguson. So that's Ram Rasmus Halunda. 
Rasmus Halunde and Evans Ferguson. Tell me what you guys think. You think this there will be a good uh, um, uh, upgrade for Manchester United? Should we? I think my question should be: Should United move to the to the, the old ways where Manchester, where say Alex Ferguson brings in young players, use them for a couple of years for half a decade, then move them on? Should we? That's how we bought Cristiano Ronaldo. I told. Uh, that's how we bought R Wayne Rooney. I told you we bought young players. Yeah, a lot. Patrick Ebert. We bought all these guys when they are early twenties, and we moved them on, and they end out to be a legend. So it is very important. I think Eric Ten Hag knows that United is a club uh, which uh, can give him that um, that path that pathway in order to bring in players and build up the kind of club, the team that he will want. So tell me on your your comments below. I would love to read them and reply them if you watch the video. Smash a like on the video. Share with them, guys. Stick on with the United Way. Make sure you subscribe because uh, we'll be having some uh, big announcements coming soon. And uh, yeah, and stay tuned, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.